In the day's other news, senior justice, intelligence, and FBI officials briefed top members of the House and Senate on classified documents in the Russia investigation. The briefings came as President Trump claims that the FBI tried to infiltrate his 2016 campaign. The White House initially arranged a Republicans-only briefing before Democrats objected. We'll have a full report later in the program. International investigators say there's no longer any doubt the missile that destroyed a Malaysia Airlines passenger plane over Ukraine in 2014 came from a Russian military unit. They say the missile was trucked into Ukraine from Kursk, where a Russian missile brigade is based. The findings were announced in the Netherlands, and prosecutors said the question now is who fired the missile. We're entering the next phase of the investigation, which is really now progressing towards the people who were responsible. And now we are narrowing down and narrowing down to finding the perpetrators. So see this as a confident call for the next phase. Investigators already concluded that the missile was fired from Ukrainian territory controlled by Russian-backed rebels. All 298 people on board the airliner were killed and most were Dutch. Moscow denies any responsibility. In Syria, war monitors say airstrikes killed 12 pro-government fighters overnight. They say those killed were foreigners, possibly organized by Iran, and the airstrikes likely came from U.S. coalition planes. The U.S. military says it has no information on the reports. There is word that U.S. airmen guarding nuclear missiles in Wyoming used and sold LSD for months before getting caught in 2016. The Associated Press reports that trafficking in the mind-altering drug happened at F.E. Warren Air Force Base near Cheyenne. Fourteen airmen were disciplined. The Air Force says none was accused of using drugs while on duty. China, Japan, and Europe are warning the U.S. not to raise tariffs on imported cars and auto parts. That is after President Trump ordered an exploration of the move on national security grounds. He acted as trade talks with Canada and Mexico have stalled over auto production. In Beijing, China's foreign ministry warned of repercussions. As everyone knows, China's stance is, we oppose the abuse of national security clauses, which will seriously damage multilateral trade systems and disrupt normal international trade order. China will resolutely defend its own legitimate interests. The head of the United Auto Workers Union, Dennis Williams, voiced cautious support for the president's move. But some in Mr. Trump's own party, including Texas Republican Congressman Jeb Henserling, warned of touching off a global trade war. The U.S. Senate voted today to overhaul rules for handling sexual harassment claims against lawmakers. The bill eliminates a mandatory waiting period before accusers can file a complaint. It also requires legislators to repay the costs of any settlements. The measure now goes to the U.S. House. Oscar-winning actor Morgan Freeman apologized today after eight women accused him of sexual harassment and other misconduct. CNN reported the allegations included touching, staring, and suggestive comments. In a statement, Freeman said, I apologize to anyone who felt uncomfortable or disrespected. That was never my intent. And on Wall Street, the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 75 points to close at 24,811. The Nasdaq fell one point, and the S&P 500 slipped five. Still to come on the news hour, briefing Congress on why an FBI informant was talking to the Trump campaign. Police released the video of a black professional basketball player arrested over a parking ticket and much more.